Okay guys, so today we're going to be building our very own mini Super Nintendo. So in this video, we're going to be going over everything that we need to get, what we need to download, and all that good stuff. So not only are we going to be looking at that and the, the case that we got here, but we're also going to be looking at the iNext Super Nintendo controllers we're going to be using. So let's get this party started. Okay, so let's just go ahead and unbox these controllers and take a quick look before we get everything started. So they do have these controllers in multiple colors. They do have them in the standard color, but I decided to go with the black with the colored buttons. Thought they looked neat. And I've, ex I've used the INX controllers. There are other ones. They're newer ones before, and they're pretty good. So I figured I'd give these a shot. These are modeled after the original Super Nintendo. They're only about 15, 16 bucks for a pair of two. Beats out the price on the iBuffalo, but the iBuffalo are top notch for sure. But these, for the price, I think the buttons feel really good. They're, you know, they're not exact, but they're pretty darn close to the original Super Nintendo controller. And you can't beat the price, so they're a definite option. So these go ahead and plug in. You're going to plug them into your first two USBs on your mini Super Nintendo here that we're building. And just want to plug them in the show. That's that's where they go. And this is how it's going to be orientated for you to play. So once you have all this stuff, you have your Collector Craft, Super Nintendo con system, your Raspberry Pi 3, your micro SD card, and your controllers. We're going to want to download a few things. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, guys, so the first step we're going to want to do to set up our Super Nintendo Mini is we're going to want to download the pre-made image for Raspberry Pi. So you're going to go to this website. Link will be in the description. You will click on the Raspberry Pi 2.3, and that will download. It doesn't take too long. While that's downloading, you're going to want to also get, if you don't already have, WinDisk Imager. So WinDisk Imager, we're going to go ahead and get that from this website. Download will be over here. I'll link that in the description as well. So download that, install. Next thing, in order to make sure our SD card is formatted properly, you're going to want to grab SD Formatter. And that'll be on the sdcard.org website in the download section. Link will be in the description. So go ahead and download that here. With the SD Formatter, we're going to use that to ensure that our SD card is formatted properly. So we'll go ahead and open that up. I do not have an SD card in here, but it's easy to follow along. What you're going to want to do is pop your SD card into a reader on your PC. Make sure you select the proper drive letter and then just click format. Boom. Takes a couple seconds. Good to go. Exit out of that bad boy. Now, while your RetroPie image is downloaded, it should be done by now. It doesn't take too long. You're going to want to make sure you know where that location of the file is. And then you're going to want to go ahead and open up WinDisk Imager. So when you open up WinDisk Imager, it's going to be similar setup to the SD card formatter. You're going to have your device on this side. You're going to have to make sure you select the proper drive letter for your SD card. So you want to make sure you're checking that. Everything's good to go. SD card formatter, and I'm pretty sure I've said this before, will not recognize any other drives but an SD card, so you're good on that. But WinDisk Imager will recognize any external drives you have plugged in. So make sure, just a tip, you don't want to override an a, a external hard drive. I've done that multiple times on accident. It sucks. Don't do it. Pay attention. So once you have this open, you go ahead and click the little folder icon here and find wherever your uh, RetroPie image is. So I'm just going to select just for for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go ahead and select an image. So PSX2, go ahead and select that. So now it's showing the image file that we're going to burn. So I'm not going to do it as, you know, the image file is on the drive F and I only have the drive F. I don't have an SD card reader on this PC, but we would make sure we select the proper drive letter and then you're going to go ahead and click write. Now, if you don't do this properly and your drive letter is not associated to your micro SD card and you write, 
that image will just overwrite that full drive so please be careful go ahead and click right once you're all set up it'll take a short while depending upon the speeds of your micro SD card but I will have plenty of micro SD cards that are known to work excellent for retro Pi and for the Raspberry Pi in general links will be in the description take a look at that so once that process is done you're gonna go ahead and pop that bad boy into your Raspberry Pi plug in your power and your HDMI make sure you plug in your HDMI first and then plug in your your power and then we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our next step okay guys so once you're booted up what you're gonna wanna do especially if you're gonna wanna get an awesome theme like this is you're gonna wanna make sure you have a keyboard attached so plug in a USB keyboard or a, a wireless keyboard with a dongle just plug that bad boy in and make sure you set your controls up so once you first boot up a fresh image you will get a screen that says configure input and it'll be up like this so you'll have this this image up it'll say configure input what I suggest you do is configure your controllers and configure your keyboard and how you do that is is once you have all your controls and your keyboard plugged in you're just gonna hold a button so let's go ahead and set up a controller so I'm holding A on the iNex Super Nintendo controller, and then I'm just gonna follow the prompt. So up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, L, and R. So that's all we can essentially set up on a Super Nintendo controller. And if we're just playing those old school games, we don't need anything else. So in order to skip the rest of these, you're just gonna hold down a button for each one and it will just say not defined which is essentially just skipping that input since we don't need it anyway so just get all the way to the bottom and if you have a, the newer version of retro pi with the newer version of emulation station at the end here it is going to say hotkey enable and we are going to want to press a button for that and the button you're going to press is going to be select just press select good to go now we're going to hit a you can repeat that for your keyboard or your other controller, like I said, and you'll just hit A on configure input and then hit A again saying, yeah, you're sure you want to do this. So once that is done and you have your controllers and your keyboard set up, you're going to want to scroll on over and your screen will look different, but you're going to want to scroll on over to the RetroPie configuration screen. And then from there, what I would suggest is setting up your Wi-Fi if you're going to be going wireless. And you'll just go ahead and go in there, hit the A button or enter on your keyboard, select your, your, um, your network, and you'll have a screen like this, and it'll just say connect to Wi-Fi network. Easy peasy, hit enter on that, type in your password. Once you've selected your network, it'll prompt you for that, type in your password, it'll take a moment to connect, then you're good to go. I'm already connected, so I don't need to do that. Next step, is going to be setting up some themes if you want to change from the standard theme like this awesome Retro-Rama theme. So now that we're connected online, we can download themes. So you go ahead and go to ES themes. Click A or A or, you know, it's going to be A on your keyboard actually. It's the way you should set it up on the keyboard. And then you'll go through here and install whatever themes you want to use or you want to check out none of these really take up a lot of space so it's not a big deal go crazy if you want check out a bunch of them the ones I recommend though are going to be toward the bottom um Trunky Fran I really love that theme as well I don't have it installed on this build but it is a nice theme the Futura and the Futura Dark are really good as well the NES Mini is an awesome theme so you can grab that have that look of the NES Mini. The Famicom Mini is a similar style as well. Comic Book is a pretty good theme. I use that one quite a bit. Cygnus is a pretty cool new theme as well. Steampunk is a really awesome theme. Hertzy Blue, classic, awesome theme. And most of these newer ones do support video snaps if you want to do that. And then Retro Ramas at the bottom. You know, a lot of these guys who put these themes out, they update them over time. So once you've installed them, you can go back through here to update them as well. So since I already have Retro Rama and the themes I want on this build, 
installed. Like I said, go crazy, install all of them if you want. Pick and choose, check them out. You can always uninstall them if you don't want them on there. But now that you have all that set up, you got your themes, you know, how, how you want it to look, you got your Wi Fi enabled, your controls set up, all that good stuff. The next step is going to be adding your games. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at how we are going to add our games to the system. Okay, so once everything is set up, now we're going to want to transfer over our games. So this is going to be essentially the final step to just getting up and running and playing some games. So what you're going to want to do, since now that your Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet, make sure that bad boy is on. Then you're going to go ahead and go to your network. Now on your network, you should have an option where it shows your RetroPie system. Now sometimes you're going to have difficulty. I do. Not all the time. just depends on the Pi for some reason. Even with, with SSH enabled, I can't connect through network. But the workaround be behind that would be using WinSCP instead. So I'll put a link in the description to download this. You may need it, you may not, but I'm going to go ahead and use it. This is what I typically use. So I'm going to go ahead and open up WinSCP. Your host name is going to be your Raspberry Pi's IP address. To get the IP, what you would want to do is on the RetroPie configuration screen on your system, you're going to scroll down it's toward the bottom. There's going to be an option that says Show IP. You'll go ahead and click that, press A on that, and it'll show you your IP. You'll go ahead and type that in. And then our password, or username anyway, is going to be pi, P-I, and then our password is going to be raspberry. So R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And then we're going to go ahead and click login or hit enter and let her show up. So on the left side is going to be your PC, the right side is going to be your Pi. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go to RetroPie, and then we're going to click on ROMs. So on this side, your PC side, you're just going to find wherever you have your games. Wherever you have your, your games that you have downloaded, you'll just find them here. So you may need to browse to that location, find them. Let's see here. So now we're in that area, wherever you have your stuff. And then on this side, you'll just find whatever system you're adding to and go ahead and transfer your ROMs over. So we'll go ahead and take, for example, Doom. Transfer that over. Transfer all your ROMs. Whatever games you've, you've loaded that you have, just transfer them over to the proper system folder name and you should be good to go for the most part unless you're loading up stuff that you need to download the emulator for so RetroPie will have a bunch of emulators already pre-installed some base images have most of them pre-installed you should be good to go for all your basic systems your NES Super Nintendo and all that good stuff so once that's all done you're pretty much ready to jump back onto your system and play some games so let's go ahead and take a look at that Okay, so once we've got all our games transferred over and you're back on your system, you're pretty much ready to go. You're pretty much good. But just to show you, once you have your games over, you see I have all my box art and my descriptions. In order to get that on your system, you're going to want to go ahead and press start on the front, you know, on the front outside of the system. You're going to press start and go to scraper. And then from here, you go to scrape now select your systems whichever systems you want to scrape the artwork for could take a while depending upon how you have this set up and you you do need to be connected online so you would click user decides on conflicts if you put that on it's going to ask you for each and every game to approve the selection or to choose a different selection for that and it's just going to give you options sometimes it works pretty good but i recommend putting user decides on conflicts on that way you can catch any games that are not properly scraped and then you would just click start and it would go through it can be very time consuming if you just let it go without user decides and conflicts it'll 
be easier and quicker to do, but you may have to go back and fix some of those issues. And in order to fix those within a game, you would just go ahead and press select and go to edit game metadata. And then you would go to the bottom, select scrape and redo it. So now that you have all that done, you're, you're pretty much good to go. There's not much else to do unless you want to get crazy with it. And we have a lot of tutorials and, and other stuff you can do as far as customizing your image and your, your RetroPie setup. But with, with what we've done today, you're pretty much good to go. This can be a, a time-consuming project depending upon how many games you want to put. But if you're just sticking to Super Nintendo and Nintendo, very quick, you'll have this done and ready in no time. Literally in, in, in an hour or so if you have all your games ready, everything transferred over, getting all your artwork, you, you're pretty much ready. Pretty much ready to jump into it and get some awesome games playing. So, with that said, I really hope you guys appreciated this video. If you can, please smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Take a look at my other videos. I have a couple awesome giveaways going on. The new Flerk case I'm giving away. A bunch of old school retro goodness. I'm giving away some, some ar arcade control kits. Uh, Pi Zero carts. Some Pi Zero kits. A lot of cool stuff. So definitely take a look at those. So catch you guys next time. Boom.